Hey folks, so as part of Shopify's summer editions, um, Shopify basically released the ability to create pages powered by meta objects. Um, I've not recently spoken about much, so I thought I'd run through uh, a, a fairly kind of complex example of how you could sort of utilize it to do multiple things, right? So not only create pages, but also tie it into existing content. So. Let's talk for a really quick requirement and I'm gonna show the end result on the screen. But basically the, the requirement was, you've got a blog like this, right? So you've got your article and then at the bottom of the article you have a, a meet, you know, you have an author section which might have something like, you know, the name of the author, short description and a button. That button, if you click it, will open up a, a bigger page about the author and this company really cares about their authors. They want them to be seen as experts so they're having a uh, expanded description and and also that author's favorite products right but they want to be able to add lots of authors um, and set them up through Shopify backend and it creates sort of multiple pages and this is a really great example of using the Shopify meta object um, solution so like this one could be for Michael and this one could be for Stan right and it's all administered seamlessly on the back end. Um, so let's talk firstly through the actual um, setup of the actual meta object. So if we go into themes and then settings uh, and then you want to go into custom data, down here we've got authors. Now people will be familiar hopefully by now with meta objects but this features bit is very new. So the things that were there before is obviously you can define the structure of the data that you're going to be storing. So in the case of authors, we've got name, a short description, a full description, an image, and a collection that they, um, that they of their recommended products. Um, if you enable this web pages one, you get this additional bit down here. Um, and what this does is it gives you the ability to connect one of the fields to the page title. So that this is your meta description, your meta page title um, and another field to the meta description. So I've gone for name and short description for those. Um, you can also give you the ability to specify the handle. So if you look at this one, you've got pages slash and then the name of the object and then the name of the actual specific entry itself. Um, so I've gone for authors and then Michael, Stan or whatever name they want. Um, Cool, so once you've done that, then it's all a bit, all a bit boopy to this one, um, you would essentially create some entries, right? So we've got Michael, we've got Stan, and obviously we've seen them on the front end, but this is what they look like on the back end, right? It's a very structured way that the data can be input. So Stan, short description, full description, a picture of Stan, and his favorite collection. Um, if you scroll down as well, because we enabled the web pages um, part on the meta object, you also get the ability to see like the URL that this will exist on and you can override the handle as well, should you wish. So yeah, really kind of flexible solution. Okay, so we've got our data structure in place, I suppose. How do you actually create this on the front end, I suppose? That's the thing. So from, from there, we'd wanna dive into online store. Um, and there's two kind of things we're going to do. The first one will be creating the, this template, right? Although I'm not going to actually show the creation of it. But what you would do is you would come in here and you click create meta field, or a meta object template, and you select the object that you want to do. So um, I've, I've done this already. So I selected authors and it basically it created this template for me, right? Um, the template was blank. There was no data. So I went in and I added a section, uh, let's take this image banner one, right? And into there, I basically um, connected my meta objects. So in fact, I'll show you one. So if I went to say um, a featured image like this, let's say I wanted to set this image as the, um, as the meta object image, right? I could, uh, click that, collect this connect uh, dynamic data source, and then I would select the image and it will pull the image from the meta object in. Same thing with uh, text as well. Um, let's say you wanted to bring you know, the name into there and you wanted to bring the description, the short description, let's say into here, uh, we could do that like that, right? Um, that's how meta objects and 
uh, kind of work. Um, obviously, I don't want this other section, but that's principally how I laid out this whole page, right? Really straightforward. And that created the pages that you can see here for Stan and for, for Michael. Um, and obviously, every time you add a new author, so if we went in and added an author called Bob, it's going to create a new entry, authors Bob, and this structure's all going to be laid out, um, pre-done, provided you fill the fields in on the back end. So really powerful stuff. Um, so let's now have a look at the history of genes and kind of how we connected this up. So there was a couple of other bits that we had to do to do this. First thing we had to do is uh, under the custom data section, if you go into meta fields, and then uh, in this case, it's the blog post, we had to add um, a definition, which was a meta object one. Uh, and then in there, we had to select the authors one, right? So we add that in. Now what this does, um, basically it allows us to select an author or multiple authors, in this case, a single author. So if we go into the blog post itself, like this one, and we scroll down and you can see the meta fields, you can see we get this author selection field and in here we can select, oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, and in there we can se select the appropriate author, right? Uh, so yeah, I could change Stan to Michael on that blog, for instance. Um, and depending on which one I connect here, we'll pull data through here. But pulling the data through doesn't actually give us this section, right? That section, similarly to what we did before, um, is handled through Theme Customizer. So if we go into Theme Customizer and we go to Blog Posts and then the default template, because I've only got one template, you'll see that I added this um, image with text section, just like I did before, um, and I pulled through the, the those dynamic sources. So in the heading, you can see that I clicked this essentially, and I pulled through the author title. Because it's connected on the blog, it can now be referenced. So that's a really important piece. Um, so that's kind of it in terms of setting up the front end. Um, as a bit of a bonus point to this, um, we'll have a quick look at translations as well. So if we look in, so let's say this website, okay, Michael, he's, uh, you want this page available in French as well. You know, how do you achieve, there we are, so that's Canada French, now it's in fr fr French. How do you achieve that? Well, if you look in Translate and Adapt, and you go to meta objects, you can then select in here, so in this case, which one's this one? It's Michael, right? Uh, you can click on Michael, um, and you can select what language you're translating to and make the translation directly in here. So not only do you have the super flexible content, you have the ability to translate it as well. Um, yeah, this is incredibly powerful, and I'm really excited to see how people utilize this. Um, apologies about the long video, but it is a complicated one. Um, I hope that's helpful uh, as always and um, yeah, take it easy.